welcome to Conquering Moss Grantmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're bringing you another episode of Curves Boot Camp. I had a lot of fun uh, getting ready for this Curves Boot Camp. I was going to do a whole bunch of fun, simple little designs that get you to learn how to sew, sew curves. Well, today we're doing an ice cream cone. And now that template, there's a two page template that's going to be in the show notes below so you can go grab it there. Um, one before you go do that, I want you guys to go check out Annette from Sunbeam Fabric Art. That channel is just starting out. She's got a wonderful voice with her quilting and channel and what she's doing there. So if you like what you see, tell her Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrapmore sent you. And we also have a Facebook group, and it's under Concrete Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. And we're building a community there, and we're using the room feature to have impromptu sew dates. And it's, we're just having a lot of fun, and members are actually becoming friends with other members. And it's wonderful. It's a wonderful, growing, uplifting community where we get to share our pictures of what is inspiring us. And not we're, those the pictures aren't just about what we're sewing here, it's about what is inspiring you. So if you want to join a group like that, come on in. Anyways, but we got to get a lot of sewing done today, so come on in here too. Okay, today we're going to show you how to make the ice cream cone. Now there is another ice cream cone that's coming up and it's on an angle and it's just, it's fun, it's cute. So here's page one and here's page two, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to cut them out and you'll find these patterns in the show notes. What you're going to do is you're going to cut them out. So the first one to assemble and probably the quickest. Now this piece here says cut two. Uh, it should read cut one then cut one reverse. So you put them, you know, like put your wrong sides together or your right sides together and then cut two at the same time, right? Because then you get mirror images and that's important that we get a mirror image. So this is the bottom. And this is a rectangular block, but I thought, I'm going to have fun with this one. I am so going to have fun. So I got a real pretty little pale thing going on here, just like that. That's how we're going to put this block together. And we've seen this block. We have seen this block several times. And it's a, you can either use the templates or Triwex ruler. Now this little notch that's been taken out here is to help you line up. And that's important for your template. So this goes real quick. Oops, let's get it all lined up on the quarter inch. That would be good. And we're just going to sew all the way along. And we're going to have the bottom of that chubby ice cream cone done right now. I just, when I, when I thought of this, I thought, yeah, I think we got to have fun with this. Okay, so then I'm just going to gently finger press this back, just like so, and put the other side on. And I want to try and line this up again, right? So that notch here is real important to help you line up. And now we have a choice. We can go one way or the other. I'm going to go this way because I, I can line up these two notches, right? Because I haven't cut off the dog here. I just ran out of bobbin. I want bobbin chicken by this much. Look at that, guys. I'm on film and I want bobbin chicken. That's impressive. Okay, let's get some other thread here. I'm always excited when I win bobbin chicken because it's like, wow, I never win bobbin chicken. So, when I'm doing regular sewing and I've got a thread donation, I never, never win bobbin chicken. I'm always. But yeah, this was fun. And I got it by four inches. So yay team. Yay team me. Okay, and you want to make sure this stays lined up. Right? This this little thing. And you don't want to pull because both these edges are on a bias. And you want straight of grain on all of the pieces. So I'm just gonna put that there. Now I got some bright fun color out of my crumbs because I have my crumbs are hand sized, right? Like hand handish size like that and smaller. So I pulled something bigger out of my crumbs and I got some more background. So this is what we're going to put together. Now, again, this doesn't look like it's going to fit, but it does. So what we're going to do is we're going to finger press a real deep seam and we're going to finger press 
a quarter. That helps you line up everything. Everything gets help, help that way. And you want to be able to see that, those lines, right, quite well. Like you need to be able to see them. Now we're going to do the same thing with this. We're going to make a nice deep line here and then fold it over and make a deep line here. Just so we know where our markings are. And this seems like a lot of work, but you know what? This is makes life so much easier. Just so much easier. Now, you can line them up like this if you want, or you can line them up like this and do it this way. It's up to you, right? So you start sewing here and then you move stuff together. It's whichever way you feel more comfortable doing this, you are welcome to do this. One, two, three, four stitches. And now we start moving these two lines together. And those two little marks go together. Now you can cut out, like make a little divot cut, like an eighth of an inch down if you want, if you felt more, feel more comfortable with that, but you've got to line these, get these two together. And sometimes, ooh, I'm getting a, I'm making a fabric pucker, that's not great. So if you see yourself making a little fabric puck, pucker, keep going, see how bad it's going to be. Because sometimes you can finger press them out. And I'm going to take the deeper line here and line it up to this fold line here. Just slowly manipulating all of this around. Okay. Alrighty, and yeah, I can hardly wait till we get to the New York Beauty ones. Those are at the end, but they're a lot of fun. There are some of those are I didn't draw very complex ones. I figured I figured I didn't want bunch of you to sit there and go oh no we can't do those so here's the cone base and we're at our next point here so we're lining up where this line is here and this line here now it's your choice whether you want to go finger pressing iron pressing making a little divot mark or you know you just want to wing it and sometimes sometimes it's important just to wing it you know just to just to have fun and let it let it happen you know don't be afraid you know if you're if you're not sh sure of yourself when you're first doing these um, everybody needs to practice this is why we're doing this we're practicing lots right um, and the more practice you get the better you are at curves right so now I want to make sure this piece this squared off piece matches this squared off piece and a quarter half inch up I'm going to put a little pin and just like so just to make sure I line up my edges right just in case you know if you're if you're not certain that edge is gonna line up well you have to make it edge line up right that's the other thing another thing to not to forget is if you're making like this is a rectangle and you're not sure that are you not comfortable with what you've cut Make your outer edge bigger, you know, don't, and then trim it down. I mean, that's, you know, that's a, a reasonable thing to do. So now, here we go with our curve. Now I'm just going to finger press this nice and flat like I did the other piece. Now, <laughs> we could embroider sprinkles. Wouldn't that be fun if you had little, you know, little bits and bobs of, you know, embroidered purple sprinkles or something like that. That would be just so much fun. So this is a rectangular-ish block. Now I have made this a little bigger. The top is a little bigger than the bottom, just so that you would have more comfort room here in your curve. So I'm going to take the whole thing and line it up. Okay, because we are going to trim this baby. I'm just gonna finger press that center again. Give it a nice sharp press and give this center a nice sharp press, right? So now, when I line these two centers up, okay, I'm gonna line them up, 
and I'm going to pin them in place at a quarter inch. Sometimes you cut big to make it easier to hold on to, right? I mean, that's, you know, you can't hold on, you can't hold on to something when the needle's hitting your finger, right? I mean, that's, that's going to be way too, way too tight. So, I've got a great, oops, my foot fell off. So, here we go. And we're not talking like a bit. So now we're just gonna put the pieces together to get our ice cream cone together. And all the way across. I tell you guys not to sew over your pen, so what do I do? I try to sew it right over mine. There. There we go. And I'm going to take this and trim it because you can see it's a little bit bigger. And I'm going to trim it and get my perfect fun little rectangle. And I'll be back with our ta-da moment. Okay, so this is our fun little ice cream cone block. I think what I'll do is I'll put little uh, sprinkles on there, just embroidering them on. That'll be fun for me. And this will add a lot of just cool cuteness to this block. It's a, basically this is a novelty block. And I made the outside edge of this background bigger because you can see that's pretty small to try and hang on to with your fingers. At least my fingers are bigger. I don't know if your fingers are dainty enough to go in there. I don't want to be that close to the sewing machine needle. So yeah, I made mine a little, you know, a little bigger just so I had something to hold on to. But this comes in two pages. Check for the pattern in the show notes below. It's also going to be in the Facebook group. So that's going to be a lot of fun for everybody. I hope you have a chance to join our Facebook group and see what's going on there and the impromptu rooms and all the very talented quilters you're going to meet and get to know. Okay, you take care. Have a lovely week. Bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for coming along with us on our little fun adventure here that we're having. We do have a Facebook group now and that Facebook group is got some very very talented quilters in there and we love sharing and, and you know posting pictures and commenting and it's it's been a lot of fun and the advantage of the Facebook group is sometimes I drop patterns in there early so you kind of get a hint as to what is coming next after the nosegay sew along we're going to be doing curves boot camp right away so we'll get to sewing those curves and it'll be fun it'll be a lot of it'll be a lot of interesting little blocks that we've got to work on but we would like you to share, like, and subscribe. Telling your friends about us and, and letting them know that you kind of like our channel, that, that means so much to us here. So you take care. You have a fabulous week ahead. Okay, bye.